Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you how to use the FFT command to interpolate a signal in time domain. So interpolating a signal um, is a very important task in signal processing and um, there are a lot of um, uh, algorithms out there to perform this. But um, using the FFT command is uh, a very efficient way of doing it and maybe it's not that well known. But um, what is well known is the so-called zero padding. So in the polating in frequency domain, meaning that if you add zeros to the signal in the time domain and then you perform the FFT command, then you will get an interpolation in the frequency domain. And we want to, do, to use the same property, but for the time domain. But there's a thing that we um, have to consider. Using the FFT to interpolate the time domain signal means that we have to uh, insert the zeros in the calculated FFT, but not at the end. We have to insert the zeros in the middle of the calculated FFT. So again, for from time domain to frequency domain, we add the zeros at the end of the vector. But um, here we want to interpolate in the time domain, so we go from frequency to time. We have to insert the zeros in the middle of the calculated Fourier transform. So let's directly head over to our MATLAB workspace. Sorry, Octave workspace. Octave. And so, okay. So let's start the script with clear all, close all, and CLC. Let's create an arbitrary signal with the, sum, uh, with the fundamental frequency of 1000 Hz and a sampling rate of, let's say, 8000 Hz. So, with these two um, frequencies, we sample our signal with 8 samples per period. So, sampling frequency divided by the fundamental frequency will give us the, the number of samples per period of the signal. So, let's create a vector that we need to generate our signal, in that case a sine wave or a cosine wave. So we start at zero and each sample in the time domain um, is separated by the sampling frequency. And we only want to uh, calculate one period of the signal. So we go from zero with an increment of one divided by sampling frequency up to one divided by fundamental frequency. This is one full period. And to have an even number of samples in our vector t, we divide again, uh, we subtract again one increment, so one divided by fs will be subtracted. Now our vector t has eight samples. Let's verify that t has eight samples. So now let's create our original signal that we want to interpolate sine, a sine wave 2 times pi times fundamental frequency times t. Let's fire it up. Again, eight samples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now let's say we want to interpolate our signal x by a factor of two, meaning that our eight element vector will be transformed to a 16 element vector because we interpolate by a factor of two. And interpolation means that we increase the sampling frequency. So we increase the sampling frequency by a factor of two from eight thousand hertz to 16 thousand hertz and how can we do this we can do this using the fft so first let's calculate the fft of our signal x fft from x and again the fft of x will have eight samples so now let's create a vector that will contain the fft of our interpolated signal we call it x interpolated and this vector will be twice as long as our original vector, meaning 16 samples. So let's hard code it. It's not nice and if you want to play around with it, make it adap adaptive, but here it's hard coded. So 60. So, and what can we do now? Again, from time domain to frequency domain, we normally um, do the zero padding to our time domain signal and we get an increased resolution in frequency domain. But now we want to get an increased resolution in time domain, so we add the zeros in the frequency domain, but not at the end, as we do in time domain, in the middle of our spectrum. So here in X, 
This is our original FFT. We stuff eight zeros because we increased the um, sampling rate by a factor of two, so from eight samples to 16 samples. We, we stuff this eight zeros in the middle of X or here, and that's why I created our vector X interpolated. So the first four samples of X interpolated will contain the original spectrum of X, so one up to four will contain X one to four. Again, X is an eight element vector, X interpolated a 16 element vector. And the values from 13 to 16, so the last four values will contain the other half of our original signal. Let's fire it up. So again, this is X and this is X interpolated. And so now the last four values contain, the last four values inside X interpolated contain the last four values of X and the first four values in the vector X interpolated contain the, the first half of our original signal X. And in between, we have eight additional zeros here. Here are the zeros. And now we can create our time domain interpolated signal by just doing the IFFT of this created X interpolated vector. Let's fire it up. So here we have X interpolated and X interpolated in time domain has 16 samples. And if we have a look at the numbers, we see that the imaginary part is zero. That's what we expect. I will uh, link the description for the math that is behind it in the description uh, below the video. So because the imaginary part is zero, we can take the real part and then X interpolated, small x, is now our interpolated signal. To plot this vector, again, we need a time domain vector as we uh, have it here, T. And we created the same way as we created our original T. And it's quite easy. We start at zero and each sample value also in our uh, new vector um, is separated by one divided by the sampling frequency. But because we have interpolated by a factor of two, our new sampling frequency is twice as high as our old, meaning 16 kilohertz, uh, 16, uh, 16 kilohertz. Yeah. So one divided by two times the old sampling frequency. And again, we only want to plot or calculate one period of the signal. So we go up to one divided by the fundamental frequency. And again, to uh, get a vector with an even number of samples, we subtract one increment. So in this case, one divided by two times Fs. So now let's plot everything and have a look at it, if we are right. So we use hold on to plot the two um, uh, curves inside one window. So we plot T against X, our original signal. And we use the dash star option to highlight the sample points. And we increase the line width of the signal. That's um, because we will plot both graphs inside each other. And at the, orig the original sample points will also be covered by the interpolated sample points and uh, that we're able to see um, the original sample points, I increase here the line width. So, and then we plot our interpolated signal with our interpolated time vector. Also using dash star to highlight the sample points. And we turn on the grid, grid minor. So a more narrow grid compared to grid on only. And X label is time in seconds and the Y label amplitude and here's an interesting thing that I nearly forgot um, using this type of interpolation um, you have to 
increase your amplitude by your interpolation factor, meaning x interpolated has to be uh, multiplied with the interpolation factor. So we've interpolated by a factor of 2, meaning that x interpolated after the inverse Fourier trans transform will only be um, half as high in amplitude as the original signal because of the properties of the FFT and the implementation. So um, if you, for example, would add six, uh, 16 zeros, meaning that you increase the sampling rate by a factor of three, you would have multiply by a factor of three here. But we have interpolated by a factor of two, so we multiply our result by a factor of two to get the same amplitude as the original signal. So now let's fire it up to see if we have made any errors and I can I already see the graph and I have to decrease the line width a little bit so and now I can show you the result of this really easy interpolation method compared to the other um, alg algorithms and approaches out there so here it is so but wait let's we, we forgot one important thing for our plot Let's add a legend that we can distinguish the original signal, original, from our interpolated. So uh, let's fire it up again. So here it is. Where is it? So here it is. In blue, we have our original signal. And as you can see, if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we have 8 samples per period. Because sampling frequency was 8 kHz, fundamental frequency 1 kHz, and uh, sampling frequency divided by uh, fundamental frequency gives us the number of samples per period. Then we increased our uh, sampling frequency by a factor of 2, because we've interpolated by a factor of 2, meaning that we result with a vector with the, um, uh, twice as um, uh, much as sample points. So 8 to 16 and we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 sample points from our new vector. And as you can see, we hit the old sampling points here, here and here. And between each pair of old sampling points like here and here, there's a new one. That's what we uh, expected because we've interpolated by a factor of two. The same here. Old sampling point, old sampling point, and here's the new interpolated one. The same as here. So, this is a quite easy uh, way of uh, using the FFT command to interpolate a signal in time domain. But again, you have to insert the zeros in between of the calculated spectrum, so in the middle, instead of zero padding them as you would do it to increase the sample rated frequency domain and yeah that's it for today i will link you the math below about all because here we have a, a Dirichlet kernel based interpolation all that fancy stuff will be linked in the description uh, below the video so see you next time bye bye